Hey, it's Anfa, and you're watching Anfa Vlog. Today I'm gonna master an EDM single. Not my own track, but something created by someone else and sent to me for mastering. I'm no mastering engineer, however, I've done some mastering in my life, mostly for my own albums, which there was a bunch of them, so I guess I know something about mastering. But mostly this video is there to show you how to master a single using Ardor under Linux, using only open source plugins. So, let's get started. Here is my Ardor session. I'm gonna import the source material. And this is it. It's in 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate. I'm going to upsample it to 48 kilohertz because this is what my jack is running and this is what I'm using for everything. The sample rate conversion doesn't matter as long as you're using high quality one because otherwise we could have some audible artifacts or even inaudible artifacts but if I was for example to boost the high frequencies a lot in mastering there could be problems bringing these artifacts up. Um, so the thing is uh, we imported this as two separate tr mono tracks. I want one track per file as new tracks. Yeah, let's do it one more time and then I'm going to remove the unnecessary tracks. Alrighty, let's close this dialog then I can remove these unnecessary tracks. Yep, and what we have is this mix. I haven't heard this track so I'm gonna be listening to it now for the first time along with you. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go!
Okay, that's it. So, well, when I first uh, got this track, it was a bit too loud and I had to send it back and I asked for a quieter version because it was peaking. To be able to master this track, I need to have two things for sure. Like, first, it cannot be clipping. And I see that this might be a problem already. And second, <laughs> it needs to have dynamic range to work with. I need to return this track and ask for a quieter version. And this is what I'm going to do. See you in a while. And it doesn't look like it's peaking right now. However, it, it also, uh, I'm not sure. There could be a limiter still uh, that might have been put on the mix bus before exporting this mix. I can't tell for sure. The peaks are a little bit too consistent to my eye, but well, um, this is what I have and this, let's, let's try doing something useful with it. So what I'm gonna do is um, first drop an EQ and play it and take a look. We have some very low bass, probably around 25 hertz. Um, Yep, yeah, very deep bass. Maybe, um, maybe instead of using a high pass filter, I would normally use a high pass filter to make sure that no frequencies, uh, no low frequencies like damage our headroom. I might try it. I'll try this. Use as steep of a high pass filter as I can get, um, and as flat in the pass band, so the, the, the frequency spectrum where I don't want any filtering as possible. That looks good. Um, what I'm going to do also is analyze this, the whole track. So I'm selecting a range with the range tool, range bolt, and then right clicking, spectral analysis. And that should give me a nice plot of the frequency of the whole track. So we can see there are some harmonic peaks of chords often used, probably. But I don't see anything really standing out. It's it's more or less an even function. This is more or less similar to what uh, a pink noise signal would probably give us. Um, yeah, if I turn on a proportional spectrum, which is just using the pink noise uh, slope as a reference, you can see it's pretty much flat. There's not, not, nothing very um, very deeply happening here. We have kind of a peak around 10, 12 kilohertz, and there's a dip around 16 to 20, but this is pretty natural because we don't really need much information. And uh, as you remember, we upsampled this from 44.1 kilohertz, so there was, mm, there isn't going to be any high frequency content above 20, 20 kilohertz, probably. Okay, I don't see any problems. I could sweep the EQ and see if I can hear any, and then we can use the measurement to, um, to see if, um, if it confirms that there might be a problem. I don't see anything wrong with the EQ balance for this mix right now. 
Let's listen and try. I'm using the headphones because uh, the monitors will only go so low with the bass. And also, uh, they are more affected with room acoustics when it comes to bass frequencies. So listening on headphones, especially to the sub bass, like, you know, below 80 hertz, uh, it's just easier. Uh, the bass is usually more balanced. However, you need to know your uh, hardware, you need to know your equipment. I know how music sounds on these headphones and how much bass I should hear for a balanced mix. And actually, you can you can master and mix well done tracks with anything decent when you learn it. So you need to listen to a lot of music and consciously analyze how much bass is there, how much highs is there, how, how does the mid sound. And then you can learn how a good mix or a good master will sound on that hardware. And then you can reproduce it uh, when you're max mastering or mixing your own stuff. I'm going to first um, reduce the gain because uh, the loudness now, it's going to clip. I'm gonna I'm gonna make my mantra louder. I can do the same for your side. I'm trying to get out a little bit more color out of this, so I I just added a tiny amount of bass, uh, maybe just to um, mitigate what my high pass could do to just cut off the bass. I don't want to lose too much bass, so I'm I'm just adding it back a little bit of that in the higher frequencies range here, and also trying to see if there isn't too much, too little of the 1K region here, the like the mids. And I just think that adding just a tiny bit of that might be a good thing. And also I added just a little bit of the highs uh, where we have this dip because uh, I think it a little bit like make the makes the thing a bit tiny bit brighter, but doesn't doesn't hurt. It's not as bright as it would hurt. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up the level, um, but maybe not as much. Okay, so um, now mastering EPs or albums is much more interesting because you balance tracks be between each other. With mastering singles, I should probably do some um, reference tracks. Um, I've added a master limiter. I'm going to make it over sample four times. This is to catch the inter sample peaks. So the limiter is app sampling the signal to a four times higher sampling rate internally, analyzing this, and then it's down sampling it again after the processing to just make sure that the peaks between samples are not. Uh, jumping off. They still could. So, yeah. I don't really see anything, I don't hear any problems that need to be addressed in this track. I could cut the start just to give it a bit less time to roll in. 
Yeah, it's been it's been cut short. <laughs> Could be longer. Due to a problem with noise from my microphone and the way I record audio, which isn't perfect, uh, you can't really hear that tail. However, I'm going to paste a clip from the raw audio file so we can hear it. I could try to copy this and uh, add some reverb to make the tail longer. However, this is already, this part is already super quiet. If we listen to this. Okay, yeah, we can hear it. Could be better. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this. Control, middle click, and I'm gonna try. Uh, let's see if I can just control mm, right click and now we have region gain. I'm gonna make this 12 to visible some lower. And now okay, this is a little bit better. Um, the fade out is a little bit less abrupt. Let's listen again to make sure that it's not broken. Okay, yeah, I like it better. Uh, we managed to mask out the hard cut tail. There were there was there was a, a scratch fading out, and there was some delay, delays bouncing around, and they were cut. Now, I'm gonna save this. I could try to experiment with some master bus compression or maybe saturation. I don't want to take the place of a mixing engineer that, that worked on this. Uh, you could try, you could try doing something, something with a compressor and see if we can get anything more exciting out of that. So we've added just a little bit of compression to maybe a little bit more glue together the main melodic and instruments and the drums. I'm gonna see what can I do with a little bit of saturation. However, the cough actually I'm gonna use a compressor for that because the cough saturator has a problem when you use um, when you don't use 100% wet processing, um, it introduces some phasing issues and. Mm, scoops your mids, which is not cool. So, to use a compressor as a saturator, um, well, this compressor has mix control, so we can use it as a parallel compressor, but also, first thing, we can compress the signal so hard and make the attack and release so quick it's gonna basically distort the signal. Of course, in such an amount, it sounds just horrible. We could actually use our saturating compressor. Mm, I want to rename this. Oh, I can't. Why? I want to put it before our uh, our glue compressor.
I'm actually putting this before the limiter. Well, this is bad. Uh, however, I'm going to cut it out and paste it on my mix track. Mm, I'm also going to change to non-strict I.O. so we don't have these. Okay, so we are first working on EQ, then we are dis saturating the track a bit, uh, and then we are compressing a little. I wouldn't do any much more things with this track. I don't feel a need. Even what I did is super minimal and actually like I don't hear a huge difference. I probably would need to A, B compare before and after uh, a lot to, to make sure and actually what, what I, if it actually makes a difference. I don't want to go overboard with this because, well, it has to be subtle. Like if you, if you do something so ridiculously obvious in mastering that everybody knows what you did, well, you're doing it wrong, probably. Unless this is exactly what the music needs and you just had to do it. Well, okay, what I'm gonna do now is uh, drop in a EBU uh, R128 meter, which is a plugin that analyzes um, the level uh, in loudness units or LU or LUFS. And I know that YouTube is currently normalizing to around negative 14 LUFS. And, well, basically, a lot of people expect mastering engineers to make things louder. And, well, there usually is a need to make things a bit louder, um, just to manage the peaks, um, to get the maximum uh, of the usable, available bandwidth of the distribution medium. And this is as true for vinyl as it is for tape and digital files or streaming. However, sometimes people for mastering deliver mixes that are already too loud. And I master things conservatively when it comes to levels. I don't like super saturated sound of the modern releases. And I, if you've listened to my album Suppressed or any other albums, you probably heard that it has pretty dynamic for EDM. Um, and this is what I like, and this is what I do with mastering for other people. <laughs> so I'm using this meter to make sure that my levels I can also run the whole thing and let's do host transport, integration to host transport. I can do, uh, I'm gonna reset and just play the whole thing. And let's see. I'm gonna look at the uh, here the audio didn't record well because I was talking while the music was playing and it's inaudible. I was thinking about making subtitles, but it sucks. So I'm gonna record uh, explanation. So I was telling that um, I'm gonna play whole, the whole track through from start to finish with the integrated loudness measurement on on the LUFS meter to tell what is the integrated loudness um, value. And that will tell me how YouTube or other streaming platforms will measure this track because they are using the same or analogous methods to determine the overall loudness. And for example, if YouTube loudness is negative 14 LUFS and it's gonna measure that the track is at negative, negative 12 LUFS, so it's 2 LU, which is roughly 2 decibels, louder, it is going to turn it down by 2 decibels every time it's played back, so it will match the rest of the material on YouTube. If it is quieter, it's not going to be turned up. So it is important to make things um, not too quiet to, unless it really makes sense for the material, if it's a ballad, it can be quiet, it's not a problem. On the other hand, um, making it too loud will make it just squashed and it's gonna be turned down anyway, so there's no point in making it super loud. This is why I prefer to make my music dynamic. Dynamic is the new loud, and I stand for that. 
I think it is. Okay, so it looks like this track is actually only one or two decibels lower than I would master it. Um, and this is like, this is what I hear, and this is also what I see. Like, there's not a lot of transients that actually need limiting or something. So uh, I'm going to limit this by three decibels. And this is actually doing input gain um, to a static zero decibel limit. So, however, uh, EBU R 128 uh, also recommends, like the recommendation is about is for broadcasting and recommends negative 23 LUFS integrated level, so for a whole program. Uh, but that's for television and radio. Uh, for music, usually we go with like negative 13, 14, 15. It, it also depends on the music. But, you know, EDM around negative 14, 13, to my ears, is good. It's not squashed, but it's properly loud that you can listen to it on a mobile device and it's not going to be too quiet because that's also a problem. Like we have these mobile devices that have limited power and they are also limited by uh, law. How loud can these devices play? So we need to consider this when mastering music because are people going to be able to make it as loud as they want on the go in a crowded city, in a metro station? Well, it is a consideration, and I've been taking many considerations when mastering suppressed like that. It's like, I think I did the best mastering job for that album so far, and I did really lots of research for that one. So I'm going to attenuate it by one and a half dB afterwards. Actually, maybe not one and a half. And now, yeah, I can get more precise with shift. and. This are, probably should give us around negative one decibel true peak, and we can do it by rendering the track. I'm also gonna make the release a little bit shorter. Let's listen now. You see, we are not actually touching the limiter yet. Nothing is happening. I wonder what will change when I disable my compression and saturation because that problem that could uh, actually affect it. Let's see. Now. Okay, we get a lot some peaks. Okay, so I could maybe um, maybe just back off my saturation to maybe 75%. So we're letting mo through more peaks. And still the level is not, nothing really is changing. Let's see. So this is getting louder than I would like to go. However, this is what the numbers say. And what your ears tell you is more important usually. I don't hear any pumping. However, I'm going to back off this by half a decibel. Um, and that will probably be it. Mm, I have already controlled the start and ending. I could also make sure that there's a clean fade in. And a clean fade out. That's cool. Yep, that's it. And, well, for a single track, you can export your whole session. I'm going to save it. Uh, so let's just do export to audio files. And now um, the go-to format is probably 
16-bit 44.1 kilohertz wave, which is near the CD, but you can also do 48 kilohertz, it doesn't hurt. Um, however, I got the original file in 44.1, so I think I'm gonna do 44.1, because um, there isn't actually any information that we need to retain. And the processing that, that is going to happen back and forth, it's not really any problem when you have uh, sufficient noise floor um, and with 24 bits on the inputs, it's basically non-existent. So I'm going to use 16-bit. I'm going to use shaped noise dither. Uh, shaped noise dither will make the dithering noise have more high frequency content and low frequency content. And the high frequency content, it has the same energy, but it is less audible. However, this is really just a non-audible difference. It's just what I like to do uh, to make sure this is the best thing possible. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use wave, 16-bit shape noise. Um, for my own purposes, I would export flax probably, but some people uh, have trouble reading flax, so I'm gonna send a wave. Not now. I'm not going to normalize the file, and this is actually, uh, yeah, this is basically a CD audio um, master. Yeah, I'm gonna call this. Revision one. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, and that's it. We're done. Let's bring more light. So, here is the expert analysis, and as you can see, we are because our true peak is about zero decibels. We didn't hit the spec we wanted. So what we can do now is attenuate our whole track by 1.1 decibel to basically lower these numbers. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go to the master limiter and I'm going to first add one more decibel of limiting and then even more than one decibel of output gain reduction. Uh, or not, not a whole. And I'm going to export it again as revision two. <laughs> now the good thing about Ardor and exporting is that the analysis is also saved as a PNG file in the folder of your export. So we have this, uh, and you can send it to someone uh, to prove what are the parameters of your export, etc. And you can also like have it there for comparison. And it's done. We have a new export, and the true peak is below negative one decibels, which is what we want. Uh, now we are at negative twelve point four LUFS, which is great. Uh, negative 14 would be better, but we don't have we don't have actually transients. Like in my music, there are much more transients. I really like to make the drums have a huge spike at the start, uh, and usually I don't hear that stuff. And this is also why it's easier to limit or crush this this things, such, such tracks because the drums don't really jump up, uh, and. This is also an example of such of such a track. We don't have too much transients of the drums. We could have more, and then we would uh, hear the effects of limiting more. Uh, here, the, uh, these are pretty, pretty hard to hear. I don't hear any effects of the limiting, which is good. I don't like to hear the effects of limiting. The, the limiter is not there to, to be a flavor of the sound. Uh, it's there to make sure that you don't clip. So, yeah. All right, this is all for today. <laughs> this video is a bit longer than I thought. Surprised? Because I'm not. Uh, I hope you've learned something. Um, master your tracks and tell me what you think. If you have any questions or suggestions, 
please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Wait a minute, I forgot about something. Oh, big thanks to all my Patreon supporters who are helping me dedicate more time to spend on the videos. Uh, the process of making these are very time consuming and um, also as I go I often report bugs and request new features for software that I use because my pipeline is 100% open source and based on Linux and partly why I do that is to help that toolchain develop and actually someone asked me a question why use open source software when there is commercial software that could get your job done faster and I'm gonna make a separate unfair rambling indefinitely video about that uh, but for now let's just say that I care about the community and about the software a bit more than I care about getting things done in the fastest possible way which kind of hurts me sometimes so anyway big thanks to all the Patreon supporters and everyone who bought my music on Bandcamp uh, if you want to find out what do I do head over to bandcamp.com and see for yourself listen uh, and if you like that Consider subscribing because that lets me know that my content is uh, what you need. And yeah, it's gonna help me out. Bye. By the way, it's already May, and this thing is rolling along. Says December. <laughs>